Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're traveling all the way to Townsville to talk with Dan Wilshelfsky, co-founder of the Townsville Barbecue Battle. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. This is episode 108 of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast. And before we get into the show, I just want to give you a couple of announcements and just, and just let you know some things that are going on. So the Smoking Hot Confessions game show has wrapped up. Last week was week number 10 and it was an absolute riot. Um, all the videos are up on Facebook now, YouTube and Instagram TV. So jump on them and try your luck against um, Australia and New Zealand's best and brightest. Um, do head on over to the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community over on Facebook. Um, I'm, uh, I'm quite humbled to be able to say that, in my opinion, it's the nicest, friendliest, and most inclusive barbecue group on Facebook. Everyone is welcome. We don't care where you come from. We don't care even if you cook on gas. Everybody is welcome there. Um, we do have daily conversation starter posts as well as all the different individual posts that the members contribute. So there's always barbecue related conversation going on in there. So do head on over there, Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Community on Facebook and join us. It's a good time. All right. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that little notification button. If you're watching on Facebook, give this video a like and a share. And if you're watching on Instagram TV, give this vid a heart and a follow there too. And finally, if you listen to the podcast through a podcasting app, have a quick look at the app and give us a five-star rating and review, especially if you're on Apple Podcasts. All of these things only take a minute and they help us to promote the barbecue scene that we all love so much. Okay, so in today's episode, we're talking to a second-generation career event promoter. As I said at the top of the episode, Dan is a co-founder of the Townsville Barbecue Battle. It's a charity barbecue competition and festival in, uh, up in far north Queensland. So today we're going to get into his background in, in barbecue and we're going to find out about the Townsville barbecue battle. And if you've been watching me for a while now, you know that I actually was able to go to the inaugural event last year. And last year was a big year for me. I went to a total of, I think, 19, maybe 20 events. And the Townsville event is one that really stood out to me. And I tell everybody about it even now, almost a year later. So I'm really excited to hear about what they've got planned for 2020 given, you know, these little things that seem to be happening in 2020. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this episode. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Alrighty, Dan, thank you for joining me in the confessional and welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. It's great to be here. Um, great to have a sit down and have a chat about um, the Mike Carney Toyota Townsville Barbecue Battle um, this year. Unfortunately, in a virtual format, um, but can't wait for 2021 to um, come back bigger and better, and I guess more legendary than 20, the 2019 event. Yeah, yeah, no doubt at all. So let's kick things off with um, with your background. How did you get into barbecue? Are you a are you a lifelong barbecue, or is it something you came to a bit later in life? Uh, mate, I've, I I guess I've um, always dabbled um, in barbecue, um, mainly just for my family and friends, not on a on a competition basis. Um, if you talk to the other guys on the committee up here in Townsville, they will tell you that I. I'm only a gas barbecuer. Um, this is uh, quite a hilarious joke amongst um, the other boys up here on the committee. So, mate, as I said at the at at, at the start, there we have no issue with uh, with gas barbecues at at Smoking Hot <laughs> Confessions. We uh, we love all forms of barbecue and all forms of barbecuers. So you are more than welcome to uh, to join us. So well, speaking speaking of that barbecue, what what type of barbecue do you have? Uh, mate, I got a, a Weber, a uh, three burner. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Genesis Weber um, up on the deck. I've also got a little Weber barbecue that we take out um, sometimes to the events. We, um, we we don't mind throwing on a roast before we start doing the events, and then after um, the many hours of of being on our feet, um, we can sit back and have a quick 
roast pork roll at the end of the day. So yeah, I'm a bit of a Weber man at the moment. So beautiful. You have good taste. Now the the Weber Genesis, I believe that was the one with the sear station, wasn't it? Between the second and third burners. Uh, first and well, from the yeah, first and second from the left hand side, it's got the sear station. So oh, okay. um, perfect for cooking steaks. Um, uh, tend to like um, the, my 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 rump steaks. Um, they're about about the most popular with me. Um, you always seem to get. Uh, uh, a consistent rump steak rather than something over the uh, uh, rib or, or uh, even a T-bones can be a little bit inconsistent sometimes. Yeah, well, T-bones in particular, they're, they're two separate muscles, so they, they cook differently, and that's that's part of the skill of of, of barbecuing a T-bone is to be able to get those two yeah. things to, to, to get both of them to cook right. It's a really hard thing to do. Um, is, but yeah. uh, choosing a rump steak over a, over a ribeye, that's, that's unheard of. Yeah, I mean, um, um, I guess I I grew up on on the on a farm. Um, it was a small uh, small crops farm, and it was always uh, you never got the most expensive cuts of meat. So we we're always on on the rump steak. It was probably actually budget steak, but um, yeah, rump steak you know, got a fair run most of the time. So yeah, still still enjoy a rump steak. Um, bigger the better some days. Yeah. I, I hear that. I grew up on a farm as well. And uh, there were some times there, weeks on end, where the only piece of steak you'd get was the one that had been hammered out to about two millimetres thin and it still had all the all the little uh, prism marks in it. Yeah, the, <laughs> the little spike marks in it from where the butcher had beaten it. Yeah. yeah. Should, have, should have some crumbs on it, basically. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, could, uh, you could hold it up and you could sort of semi-see through it in the light. <laughs> that's it that's the ones <laughs> so 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 growing up, uh, growing up on a farm like that did you did you raise and process um your own animals and stuff like that no no it was predominantly small crops so um my grandparents had the farm i was probably uh, i suppose 10 or 11 when they sold the farm um and then from there it was a, a few year crossover where um um, my grandparents were still on the farm. My parents decided to get into amusement rides, and basically, when I was about eight years old, we, um, my father, father bought his first amusement ride. So um, that's about just on 28 years ago now that we started doing amusement rides out of Bundaberg in um, central Queensland. So, um, so I've been around the events game for, for quite a long time, probably more, many, many more years than actually on anywhere near the farm. So yeah, but it's, I guess it's a childhood memory about being on the farm with the, with the, um, the barely there steak. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you uh, if you started life on a farm and then moved into an amusement uh, rides business, I guess what you're <clears> trying to say is that you had the best childhood ever. Pretty well, yeah. Yep. So you've just really gone from one set of toys on a farm to an for a, <laughs> yeah. another set of toys, especially growing up. And I was quite a popular kid at school, especially my parties always ended up with with jumping castles and rides and all sorts of stuff at my parties. So um, I ended up being quite popular in in the birthday party stakes. So um, aside from that from that rump steak, what are some of your other favourite things to cook? I, I don't. I'm, I, I love tasting all the different snags out there there's, there's so many different snags going around from the local butchers now so um, whether they're pork pork snags or beef snags they they i just love yeah trying trying a fleet of those almost down to is going going to see the butcher and saying can i have one of each just to just to test them out over the next um over the night and have them for lunch the next day so they're the favorite ones for me so uh, yeah and did you refer to that as a fleet of sausages that's like a sample pack. A sample pack of snags. I reckon some butchers need to get onto a sample pack of snags because um, I don't know about you down there up here. Some of the butchers up here, they have sort of 15, 18 different types of snags. So I reckon they need to have a sample pack or a fleet of them all in, all in come and try one snag. So um, it might be an option for a couple of the butchers up here. Yeah. Well, that's that's quite interesting that you that you do mention that there there has been quite a resurgence in in artisanal sausages, hasn't there? Yeah, there has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, uh, 
Oh, and one butcher we use up here is probably, I don't know, his, his window's probably got 16 or 18 different flavours, thick and thin. So, yeah, it's it's really the good old stag has is, is definitely come back. And once you throw it on the Weber and, and get a nice crispy um, outside, um, it's, yeah, it's one of my favourites. Oh, same. And I'd, i got to tell you too, one of my all-time favourite things is the next day <coughs> grabbing a cold sausage out of the fridge and putting some barbecue sauce down that and eating them cold. I actually think I prefer. Yeah. I, I sometimes prefer that to eating them hot. I'm strange. I'm yeah, weird. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do the cold stags, um, but a nice fresh bit of bread um, with a bit of barbecue sauce and a hot snag for a sausage sizzle lunch the next day. That's that's a good favourite. So it's almost like going to Bunnings, but you don't even have to go and spend anything at Bunnings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we actually yeah. sometimes just, just go to Bunnings and don't even go inside. So I just get a snag on the way out. We just turn up. Way yeah, yeah, yeah. If we, do, we just get a can of drink and a, and a sausage and we, and we tell my son we're having a picnic. <laughs> yeah, fair cool, fair cool. <laughs> we just we just sit on the big piles of uh, bags of pool salt out the front of the bunnies. <laughs> yeah, uh, grab a snag. That's the, that's the, uh, there's so many stories about grabbing the snag out and my sister and her kids they um they go to Bunnings for a balloon and a sausage sizzle and mum gets a coffee. That's that's their daily trip to um to Bunnings. So or maybe a weekly trip. Mate, I tell you what, for the longest time, my Saturday mornings was get up early, take my son to swimming lessons. Swimming lessons ended uh, with just enough time for us to drive to Bunnings for the kids art and craft hour. So we'd, yep. we'd go to Bunnings, do the kids' arts and craft hour, come outside, grab a sausage and a drink, and then go home. We'd be gone all yep. morning. My wife would have the house to herself. She loved it. Every, <laughs> everybody it. won. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect Saturday morning right there. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. Alrighty, so let's move on then to the Townsville Barbecue Battle. As I said at the top of the episode, it was an absolute cracker for me last year. Um, I, I think we only met for about 30 seconds because we were both just so busy all day. So busy. Yeah, and um, yeah. so it's, it's, it's good to actually be able to, you know, spend some time looking at your, well, almost face-to-face, webcam to webcam, and, uh, and, uh, and to be able to have this conversation. So let's, uh, let's get right into the to the nitty gritty of the Townsville barbecue battle. How, how did the concept come about? Tell me about the, the, the origins. The origins. So, um, basically Paul, Paul Miller, um, JT, Justin Thompson and Dennis Littlewood came to me November, 2018. Um, Paul essentially, um, I'd been dealing with him through a, a spring fair at a local school for many years. So he knew my event background um so he approached me to to get on board with these guys to bring low and slow or or a low and slow barbecue competition through to townsville um something that really hadn't had been discussed with a few of our sponsors um however it, it was probably more that they were looking after their own backyard rather than trying to get it as a whole community event. Um, so I, the four of us who really didn't have any association with any particular, um, particular, uh, barbecue company, um, myself being really totally out of the barbecue world, um, it was it was really a great match that we could put something together and get everyone collectively on board to support um, the Mike Carney Toyota Townsville Barbecue Battle. So um, that was November 2018. Um, by uh, January, um, I think it was the third or fourth of January, we'd um, we'd met with um, uh, Chris Carney at, at Mike Carney Toyota. Um, and he's an avid smoker, uh, as well. So he was straight away, he was on board as the naming rights sponsor. So, um, which was a great mix for, for, for us up here. Um, we had that, um, uh, that overall sponsor that wasn't really a, a, a central um, barbecue shop, so there was we, we could then make it a full community event with every barbecue shop or butcher in that industry um, 
uh, a, a part of a part of the event. So um, it worked really, really well. We 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 had um, you know, this is an ongoing joke for us um, on the committee. Last year we had thirty four sponsors, um, and we only had nineteen teams last year. So <laughs> um, the on the ongoing joke is that we basically had nearly double the amount of sponsors. Um, so that that really showed us that there is a, a huge support for low and slow. Um, in in Townsville, so or in North Queensland, um, we were blown away. Um, in the initial stages, we we were looking at a ABA light event to to get it going, get local teams. But when we put the idea out to the barbecue world, all of a sudden, within uh, within. Um, let's call it, uh, I'd, I'd say about 10 days, say two weeks, we had about 21 teams interested to come up to North Queensland. So that's when we went back to ABA, to Rachel, um, and said, hey, we've got this amount of teams, um, we've got this amount of sponsors, can we make this uh, a fully-fledged event, which is where we ended up for the 2019 event. So... Um, we, we put the event in the most iconic place in Townsville. Um, we, and I'm pretty sure, um, Ben, you were, you were there. Um, many of the teams were enjoying the sunrise when they, when they started their cook at 4 a.m., um, taking selfies on the strand, over, overlooking Magnetic Island. Um, it was a picturesque morning. So um, it, it, um, it really did highlight how special townsville and especially the strand um is in 20 was in 2019 and still is now so yeah that location was just outstanding like i like i said at the start i I went to a bunch of different uh, competitions last year and that was by far the most spectacular location for a barbecue comp i I did keep noticing though that uh, throughout the day there were a lot of people at the beach but no one was actually in the water. And I was talking to one of the local teams before. I said, do, do, do Townsville people just not like to swim? And they looked at me and said, no, it's because there's crocs in there. Yeah. Like, yep. What? <laughs> yeah. There's uh, middle of winter. Normally in the summer, they have the stinger nets out. So, cause we, we have the stingers as well. So they have stinger nets out, which is a, a small netted barrier towards the crocodiles. Um, keeps the stingers out, but it won't still won't keep the crocodiles out. And I believe there's even photos of crocodiles laying on top of the stinger net sunbaking. So <laughs> um, I'm personally not a f- great fan of swimming summer or winter down the strand just simply for that reason so um but there's uh, it's it's a picturesque place down there on the beach um bringing low and slow to that to that part of the world was just amazing so yeah it was absolutely beautiful now i I just want to um to loop back to something that you said before you mentioned that um that you basically had a had a two to one ratio of sponsors to competitors it's usually yep. at best the opposite way around. At best, yeah. it's usually two teams for every one sponsor. Um, yeah. So what do you think it is about a barbecue competition or the barbecue scene in general that just appeals to the community of Townsville so much? I think last year it was a totally new concept that no one in North, well, no one in Townsville, no one, no one in North Queensland had seen. Um, there, there, there's so many people from all different um, businesses that are avid, low and slow. And when we put the feelers out for sponsors, we didn't, well, I personally didn't realise how much following low and slow barbecue had. And these guys that do follow low and slow are business owners of, of Townsville. So um, they all jumped on board. Um, we had um, the radio station, some of their um, our Triple M, our, our radio station sponsor, they had um, guys in their office that are uh, avid smokers, so they were keen straight away to jump on board. We've got city council employees that are, that are avid barbecuers. So pretty well all of our sponsors somewhere had a tie back into um that they are 
a, a low and slow enthusiast in some format. So um, with 19 teams we ended up with last year, um, we thought that was a particularly special effort considering there was, um, oh, there was definitely um, – one team, one guy flew in. I can't remember his name. One guy flew in from Melbourne, That's from memory. Dan uh, Barrett. Dan Barrett. Yep. Uh, we had a couple or one team um, from Sydney. I think the two smoking Arabs. Yep. They drove up from Sydney. Um, country boys out of Brisbane. They came. They made the journey, um, and ultimately took home the grand, the grand champion as well. Um, so all up and down the Queensland coast, we had teams from. Um, Atherton Tablelands, Cairns, Mackay, all the way down, Sunshine Coast, uh, uh, the guys that came second, I think they're Serial Grillers. Um, they're right. on the Sunshine yeah. Coast. Um, they actually, I believe one or two of them of that team actually grew up in Townsville. So they were, they were over the moon to get back home to see their family and friends, but to come second in front of their family and friends is a, is a pretty good effort. So, um, the other amazing, um, thing, and I, and I, it took me a couple of months after the event to realize this is that the all ladies team of Queens of Q, um, aren't you, it was their rookie or well, they won the rookie um, prize. Um, it was their first barbecue comp, but I believe they actually finished fourth overall in their first competition, which was just an um, amazing, amazing outcome for those guys or those girls, I should say. So, Yeah, they got several call-ups and, and took home a bunch of different trophies. And as you said, they, um, they took out the, the rookie uh, first place in the, in the yep. rookie category. And then yeah. also fourth place overall. And that was that was outstanding. Now some yeah. of the teams yeah. that that you <clears throat> mentioned there, um, Country Boys Barbecue, uh, Dan Barrett from Big Smoke Barbecue, and yeah. Two Smoking Arabs. They are some of the biggest teams in the game at the moment. What do you think it was that that drew them that far up to Townsville? Um, uh, I would love to say the community concept, and they wanted to come and visit North Queensland. But I, I did hear along the the rumor mill is that they wanted to come to um, the north to come to North Queensland because the algorithm in the judging gave them a, a good <laughs> chance of um, of picking up great points. That that was the rumor that I heard. Um, I I I don't know if that's true. Um, so I'm going to stick with that. They wanted to come and visit North Queensland. They wanted to come up and check out the the community event the the free community event that we threw on in Townsville so that that's what I'm going with Ben yeah let's go with that one I'm 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 sure nobody out there would be gaming the ABA system I'm sure that that, that absolutely doesn't happen and smoking your confessions no way endorses that kind of behavior in any way shape or form so we'll go with the first one the 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 community focus um, community focus. I, I don't think we've actually um, discussed that that aspect of the competition yet. Can you give us an idea of what the uh, of what that community focus was? So I guess it stems right from the um, the uh, start uh, when we initially met that we wanted to bring the whole community together. So when we say the whole community, we say um, the the local barbecue stores. Um, we wanted to bring um, the local teams out to come out and compete. So, and then ultimately, uh, we wanted to bring the community of Townsville in out, out to the event um, to sample what low and slow barbecue is about. So, um, by doing this, we we probably went against the grain of most other competitions around um, Australia in that we had it free to the community to attend. Um, we estimate that we had um, 12,000 people throughout the day um, attend the event. So um, some organisations have actually um, estimated it to be more like 15 to 18,000, um, but 12,000 we felt comfortable with that that attended um, throughout the day. So um, we learned a lot from that. We, we had people in the park from 
uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, um, wanting to know what was going on, um, where our official time was, uh, official start time was 12 noon. Um, we had people on Friday night when all the teams and the VIPs were around, um, wanting to come down and see see what see what the the start of the cook looked like. So, um, 2020 was shaping up to 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 include those few changes. Um, so we're going to save them up our sleeve for 2021 now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can certainly vouch for those large crowd numbers. That place was packed from, from the start to the finish. I, I, finish, I turned yeah. up there. Uh, so you said that it was open to the public at midday. I think I got there at about half past eight, nine o'clock to start doing my thing there. And uh, I was <clears> shocked <throat> when I first got there because there were so many people already there. And I turned up, I went, Oh, I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Yeah. <laughs> but then, but then well, I realised that I yeah. wasn't, and everything was fine. But yeah, for, for a fine. second there, I was really worried. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it just blew us away. Um, we expected people to come a little bit later for for lunch, and then hang all afternoon, um, have a beer in the in the in uh, in the Otto's tent. Um, so that was our expectation, but people came out early. They, they wanted to see what the smell was like. Um, they wanted to get front row seats for Adrian Richardson. Um, so it, it was, it was a learning curve last year. Uh, we learned, we did learn a lot from it. Um, uh, yeah, like I say, this year was, was shaping up. To, to make sure those changes were were all implemented. Um, but yeah, unfortunately we'll now do them in 2021. So so those those challenges that that you mentioned there before, what what was the biggest challenge that you faced in in putting together such an incredible barbecue festival? Um biggest challenge that <laughs> Paul and I actually joked about this is um, it, it's probably the, the marketing and getting um, getting the marketing exactly right to portray the support of our sponsors. So whether that's logo placements, um, making sure that everything that we've, um, that, that we've promised our sponsors, we've delivered on. Um, so that that's probably the biggest challenge for us. Um, the, the event itself, um, logistically, um, it was, it was a challenge last year. Uh, last year because it was it was something new um whereas um this year or next year now it will be um sort of a walk in walk in the park because we have that experience from last year so um the yeah so really the behind the scenes um and and this probably i would vouch for most event organizers it's behind the scenes stuff that nobody sees um that's that's the most difficult um looking after our sponsors making sure all our media um is out uh, making sure it's correct what we've promised um the sponsors what they're going to get yeah and i guess with um what did you say 34 sponsors that's a, 34 spawn. Yeah, that's yep. a hell of a lot of coordination on your on your posters for working out who gets top billing with the biggest fonts, and then who's on the next row, that's the next right. row, the next yeah. row, and yeah, that's yep. a lot and to keep last, track of. A lot to keep track of. Everyone's logos are different, different sizing, different files, color um, schemes, so and... color schemes. So um, last year we had the Grill Lux, which was the Mike Carney Toyota um, Townsville Barbecue battle Hilux so we had um, logos on that um, unfortunately we didn't get everyone's logo on that because it had to go to print so we could get it onto the streets but we still had I think there was 24 or 25 logos running around the streets for three months beforehand so that was a that was um, just getting that over the line was a was a minor miracle um, but we got it there in the end so um, so yeah that, it's um, there's plenty of uh, plenty of challenges, I guess, that uh, 12,000 people came down and seen the spectacle on Strand Park, but there was basically seven months of, seven and a half months of lead up work behind the scenes, um, d- dealings with sponsors, um, uh, all your insurances, all, all of the um, permits and license required from um, Queensland Police and City Council, etc. So it's it's something that just doesn't pop up overnight. That's for sure. Yeah, I can't imagine that all the licensing and insurances for a <clears throat> for a beachfront location in a beautiful town like that would be would be cheap. 
Um, it's it's it was it's not cheap. Um, I guess we're in a envious of war or envious position because um, my own business did own a lot of the logistics, and I've had a lot of experience in already um, dealing with uh, certain elements of these licenses and permits. And I had a lot of contacts that I could quickly get answers from. Um, so I guess that was the, the advantage of having um, myself on the, on the committee working with the guys is that um, cause, cause it's my, essentially my, my business and my background. Um, we, we could get, things happening fairly quickly so um council city council were amazing they were a sponsor of the event um they they helped us through um uh any of the problems any of the licenses that we needed um anything that was um slightly off they suggested what we could do to fix it um we managed to uh, get the fireworks onto the barge. Pacific Marine Group were fantastic in, in donating a, a high proportion of that barge cost. So um, that that way that we felt was a, a great spectacle to end the night. So um, so yeah, I can't speak highly enough of, of especially Townsville City Council um, uh, making it and wanting the event something new for Townsville. So making it um, pretty easy to, to sort through and, and get it all finalised. Yeah, beautiful. I, I love it when the um, <clears throat> when the powers that be in the community get in behind these events and really sort of push it along themselves as well. So what would you say would be the biggest success um, from, from uh, Townsville 2019? Yeah. Um, I think that the biggest success is bringing the whole community together. Um, we, we had not only 12,000 people, we've got 34 sponsors who all have an interest in low and slow barbecue. Uh, we had 19 teams from all the way up and down the East coast of, of Townsville. Um, we, we had vendors from, we had food vendors from North Queensland, Cairns, uh, Mission Beach, Townsville. So essentially the biggest win I think for us was having, having the whole community involved. Um, and everyone had a passion that was in the park for low and slow in my opinion. So um, the smell uh, from Strand Park was phenomenal. So um, people still talk about that in the community this right now. So yeah, community, the community spirit would be, would be the biggest win for us out of 2019. It's actually one of the things that I've commented on most when people have asked me about the Townsville barbecue battle <clears throat> is, I, is I've said, look, straight up for like, not just for an, in, for an inaugural event, that's a bit difficult to say for an inaugural <laughs> event, not yeah, just for yeah. a startup event, but for any event, that kind of community backing to have that many members of the public in there. If you look at that on a per capita basis of the city of Townsville versus a, a per capita basis of say Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah. You guys smashed it. Absolutely yeah. smashed it. When you look at, so Townsville's about 180,000 people to get 12,000 people on Strand Park, um, there was some people that travelled, yes, but we, we're still looking at sort of eight on eight percent of the population of Townsville came down to to the event. So, um, I guess looking at say Sydney or Melbourne, um, it's probably um, four hundred thousand people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, when you when you put up per capita, capita, it, it was yeah we. We just were amazed how many people actually turned up and came and seen what we what we put on. So yeah, yeah, it was it was absolutely incredible. I I could tell the people loved it. Um, competitors, <coughs> uh, vi visitors like myself, everybody just had an absolute ball. Now that brings us, of oh. course, up to twenty twenty now. And I never use bad words in my smoking hot confessions branding, and and media and stuff. But I do have to say, twenty twenty has been an absolute COVID of a year. Um, and, uh, that fell flat. That's okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so t t tell us, um, about the, the fallout of COVID, the, the, the effects, what's it had on, what's it done to Townsville barbecue battle for 2020? 
Um, uh, 2020 barbecue battle, um, well, about mid April, we made the decision that we would have to postpone the entire event through to June, 2021. Um, we did it with a heavy heart, but we knew, um, essentially we were in the, we were about to basically click send on merchandise orders, raffle tickets orders, which was really getting to the nitty gritty, um, three months out before the, before the event. So we really had to make a decision to postpone it or, and, Thankfully, we have. Uh, thank, thankfully, we did because the event wouldn't, under the current restrictions, the event wouldn't have been able to go ahead. Um, so, with that in mind, um, between us, we we just couldn't let it go. So, um, we 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 just couldn't let twenty the the hard work that we did in twenty nineteen. Um, so we pondered and thought, and um, I'm. I'll give the credit to Paul's wife, Beck, who threw the idea in Paul's in Paul's head to say, well, why don't you do it online? Why don't you do it virtual? Um, so that's where um, late one night uh, Paul rings myself and JT and says, well, how about we do it virtual? Which, which when you first hear it is um, quite daunting. So how are you going to do a barbecue competition virtual? But as we work through it, um, we've we've managed to get some of our um, our biggest sponsors on board. Um, so, uh, Mike Carney Toyota, of course, um, Triple M, um, Townsville, um, Townsville City Council, Mentally Healthy City Townsville. So we've got a few of the the, the biggest sponsors on board and come up with um, Townsville or Mike Carney Toyota Townsville barbecue battle virtual um we threw it out online six days ago um as of this afternoon we had 28 teams registered to compete so wow. they so we got 28 yeah 28 teams um they will do three hand-ins um so they the the hand ins the judging process is is a tough bit um basically uh, at a normal barbecue battle, a high proportion is taste, obviously, but there is also texture and um, presentation. So in this virtual barbecue, um, the judging process will be heavily based on texture um, and the presentation of, of, of the category that they're putting forward. So um, it, it is an, it, it's not an ABA sanctioned event. Um, it is, um, um, there will be only, we've got three judges. So, um, they'll be in a, in JT's locked up house and being sent through all the photos and the videos so that they can still do an independent judging. Um, but due to basically due to the restrictions, it's, it's not possible to put 30 odd judges in, a, in the one area. Um, so, so that's how the, the, the judging or the teams side of it has come about. Um, we will basically broadcast the whole day online. So, um, JT, while he's doing his judging process, uh, Dennis will be emceeing, um, via Zoom, via our Facebook, um, Townsville Barbecue Battle. Um, Paul and I will be, uh, out in the Mike Carney Toyota, um, van or ute, um, and we'll go around visiting our, our, our main sponsors for the day. So we'll, we'll drop in at Riverway Meats, um, barbecues galore, Ryland's Weber and Otto's and have a, have a little live stream from, from whatever, from their shops and whatever they got on in store for us. So, um, so yeah, we, we've got an action pack day um the only difference is everyone's going to do it with their device in their hand or from their lounge room rather than strand park yeah I, it's a fascinating concept and i love the um how how you guys have looked beyond just the competition but to actually turn it into an online spectacle so you've got you've got things happening throughout the whole day as you mentioned you've got all your different live crosses from around town um going to visit some places like uh, Riverway Meats. I've been watching them online through their social media profiles. They're doing some interesting stuff in their shop in there. Um, you've got, of course, Barbecues Galore, you mentioned, um, Anju and the, and the crew there. They'll, um, I'm, yep. I'm sure they'll put on something good for you there as well. 
You've got uh, Chris Carney from the from Mike Carney's Toyota there, who you said is is into smoking as well. It'd be good to see if he can pull something into the into the Toyota yeah. dealership and maybe feed the guys there in front of you and um, yeah. have his yeah. have his team judge his meats or something like that. Just gonna yeah. just gonna put that idea out there. To, just throw just throw it out to him. Yeah, <laughs> just just surprise him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> um, and and I think I saw something about live music as well. Have you guys got like a like an actual entertainment lineup as well? Um, so we've got uh, Dave Graffin. So if anyone was at the 2019 event, Dave was on stage playing um, tunes throughout the day. So Dave's going to do some live music throughout throughout um, the day on Facebook. Um, we've still got Matt Galinsky, who was going to be our celebrity chef for 2020. So he's going to do some live cooking demos. Um, we've got Michael Bryan from A Touch of Salt. He is a local uh, chef in the restaurant up here. Um, Chris Davey is going to do a cooking demo as well. Um, so not only do we have the live crosses, um, there'll be uh, the, the the teams with their <coughs> excuse me with their um, with their their category hand ins. Um, so we're going to have some entertainment throughout the day as well. So um, plus there's there's um, the sponsor reels that have made this whole thing possible. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So if I can loop it back to the competitors just for a second, what are the three categories that they're going to be cooking? Uh, chicken, any cut, uh, beef and lamb. Now you've thrown me, Ben. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, chicken, chicken, any cut, I believe is the 12 noon hand in. Um, beef and beef ribs um, and a th- 95% sure there's a lamb as well. So you throw me on that one. Um, three categories, 12, two and four, just because everything's got to be done um, remotely via email um, or, or phone um, text message through to the judges. Um, we've had to allow a little bit more time so that they can collate everything. Um, presentations will be live from Strand Park. Um, so four o'clock is the last hand in um we'll have um live the the winners will be announced at strand park at 7 p.m so we'll have a little ceremony down there i believe um the deputy mayor is going to come down with a few other dignitaries as well to um help us announce the winners awesome so competitors are going to be cooking at home i'm guessing if, if they're doing beef ribs they'll be starting quite early in the morning they're going to be cooking at home um, for the presentation. Are they expected to put it in boxes on parsley? What are the, or are they just uh, just putting it on a plate and photographing it? How's that? How's that coming together? So basically, on the morning, we're going to send out um, a dated placemat that they will print out. So we'll have our our virtual logo with a date on it um, that will be emailed to all the competing teams on the morning. So they will print that out and that will will be what they serve um, or present their their category hand in on. So um, no early, early um, Tuesday or Wednesday cooks. Um, So hopefully, well, it should make it all rigid did. So you got to get out of bed nice and early and cook it on Sunday morning. That's a much better idea than making them hold up a newspaper like a proof of life kidnapping. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not going to be, um, uh, I guess, ABA championship judging process, but um, with everything online, we're, we're, we're adapting the best we can to get it um, as fair as as fair as we can for all teams. So yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And there'd, there'd still be measures in place to make sure that it's all anonymous. You know, they can't scribble their names on the, on the hand in sheets. That's or right. Like yeah. That. Yeah. 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 All anonymous. Um, there's three judges and they've got a support crew. So um, JT's wife, Lee will be looking after all the emails and um, text messages coming through. Um, JT and the other two judges will essentially be in a, in a locked room, um, very no, 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 no um, access to no uh, social media devices all day, pretty well. So he, he so, can um, relive the event on Sunday after a, a beverage or two, I would imagine. This judge's gig sounds rough. They got to spend all day locked in a room <laughs> with, with no devices or anything to distract themselves. 
Yeah, they have to judge yeah. all these photographs of of barbecue. They barbecue. don't actually they don't actually yeah. get to eat any of it. Yeah. <laughs> so JT JT has mentioned this to us already. I'm so not sure he, is, he, has. he has. Yes, yes, he has. He has requested um, a nibbly pack. Um, he is also. I did say Subway, but then he come back quite quickly with, um, "Can we get some big juicy steaks if we're in between?" So that'll that'll be on the menu for JT and the judges, I would imagine. That sounds good. I I can't <laughs> imagine that they're going to enjoy the day much otherwise. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! Um, all right. So, what um, what sort of challenges have have presented themselves in in changing from a face to face competition to a virtual competition? Um, it's probably around the judges and the teams that that's taken us the most amount of time um, just to come up with the whole system. So it's as fair as possible. Um, when we put it out to um, the, the sponsors that we've got on board, they were, they were more than happy to, to jump on board so that we can keep the relevancy of, um, of the event running. Um, so, so 2021, um, we can come back bigger and better. Um, so the going through the whole process of um, judges, teams, and then I guess the most one of the biggest daunting things for us was that we had had the sponsors um, happy to be on board, but we had no teams. So to get it out to the teams and how well that was going to be received being only four weeks away uh, when we announced it. Um, it's that was really quite daunting, but uh, like I said earlier, as of this afternoon, um, there was 28 teams out of a possible 32. Um, wow. We kept it. We kept it at 32 teams because um, for the 2020 event, we actually had 32 teams lined up for Strand Park. Um, we changed the layout of Strand Park so that we could fit. Uh, 32 rather than 19 um, so that's why we kept it to that 32 teams for the virtual event as well mate I'm I love the fact that you've almost doubled numbers um, even though it's it's gone to virtual and I think it's because you've you've put all these measures in place to make sure that it's going to be done so well so that's that's a that's a lot of kudos coming your way there so perhaps the okay. most important thing that 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 we can talk about before we move on from uh, from this particular topic is how can people watch this whole day of barbecue extravaganza? Because you do realize that you haven't just created a virtual barbecue competition. With all the things that you're doing, you've created probably the world's first barbecue TV channel. TV channel, yeah, yep. Yeah. So this is, um, uh, I guess, uh, another daunting thing for us. So essentially it's going to be as much information as we can get will be coming through Townsville Barbecue Battle Facebook page. Um, we've got um, Zoom uh, interviews that will be transmitted through to Dennis, who's our MC, who will, once again, he'll be working from home, another, um, another one of those jobs where he'll sit in a computer room in the air conditioner all day basically piecing together uh, video footage and, and putting some intros and emceeing it through the day. So to follow to follow it um get on townsville barbecue battle facebook page um turn your notifications on um even from now uh we've we've slowly been doing announcements um there's more scheduled announcements to come with all the celebrities um we have uh 95% completed the run sheet for the day we're just piecing the final um final uh, puzzle pieces into it so that will be also published up online so then you'll have a full rundown of, of the schedule uh, when uh, the celebrities when the hand-ins when everything is slowly start or when everything is happening so what i would suggest yep turn on um, your notifications and make sure that you've um, added council barbecue battle uh, to to your facebook you're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. 
All right. So as we said at the start of the of the episode, you have a long history in uh, in putting on events. At, as you said, when you were eight years old, your your father bought a um, an an amusement rides business. So I thought that it it might be nice to close out the episode with a with a bit of a lesson, some 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 tips and some ideas, some best practice principles um, on how the listeners could put on uh, an event of their own. Um, there's, there's so many elements that you will, you always got to consider when you, when you're doing your events, something that we had to consider when we're doing uh, Townsville barbecue battle. So, um, my event background really started from eight years old, um, right through to, to now that I own my own, um, amusement ride business and event business. Um, I am a co-owner in uh, pop-up food trucks townsville um so we, we do food truck events around the townsville area and nice. we also own the management rights to cotter's market one of the iconic cotter, uh, iconic markets here in townsville so um as for staging your own events <clears throat> it's always helpful that you've got a great working team so um we we had jt paul dennis and myself um not a huge team um huge team tends to complicate matters in the lead up um however the extra volunteers the extra um crew around on the day is very much needed so um our team of four worked beautifully we all had a different skill set um so we bought something different to the table that we could have our weekly or monthly meetings then weekly meetings to um to go away and work on what we had to and then come back um with progress each week so that would be one big thing um small team um i know that sounds crazy but um i find that large teams of organizing there's there's a lot of a lot of cooks in the kitchen and not much else um there's there's different differing opinions all the time so not much else gets done um i guess the other thing that um makes or breaks um <clears throat> any event is really your your media and your marketing so you you may have um a great idea but without um, a media partner, um, your, your marketing sorted, um, the event is really going to go nowhere. So, um, last year with the Mike Carney Toyota Townsville barbecue battle, um, we had uh, triple M, uh, we had PBH studios, uh, we had, um, uh, which magazine, the magazine that we had on board last year that's escaped in NQ success um, did a, a page and they actually printed our whole run sheet in the back cover of, of the magazine. So having those media outlets really does um, make or break your events. So you might end up with 200 or you end up with 12,000. So um so that's a that's a that's a huge element um, of any event. Um, the other big thing is then obviously having the right person with your logistics. There's there's nothing worse than spending or having somebody or or yourself running around spending all day because there's um, not enough toilet paper in the toilets. There's um power tripping out because of overload. Um, the bins are overflowing on the ground because believe it or not um the, the the big things that people will remember out of any event is how clean the toilets were and where did the rubbish go so if there's a pile of rubbish next to the bin um they will remember that and if the toilets are dirty and smelly and there's no toilet paper that'll be the second thing they remember not how good a day they had yeah if i can add a third thing to that from my experience it's always toilets bins beer lines yeah. 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 <laughs> if the line's too long for the beer, they yeah. get upset. Get upset. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I guess the fourth thing from there is if um, the food vendors have such a successful day that they're running short on, short on food, which um, unfortunately by about seven, 30 or quarter past seven at last year's event and many of the food vendors were on their, on their last brisket rolls pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I remember that. I I ran around after the event just as if just as it was closing down, trying to get some dinner, and there was just nothing left. Nothing left. Yeah, yeah. 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 
fortunately, some of the some of the competitors <clears throat> shared some of their leftovers with me, so I was I, I was well taken care of. <laughs> Taking care of beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Well, look, man, that, that's a really nice way to, um, to, to round out the episode with those words of advice from you. So th- thank you very much for that. And I want to give the studio over to you now. So you give some shout outs to whoever you want to, some thanks, some praise, and just remind everybody once again, where they can track down the Townsville barbecue battle on the socials. On the socials, yeah, no dramas. Um, so I guess our biggest, um, the committee is uh, a huge integral part of what we do, and I guess our partners as well. So my fiance Amy, um, Paul Miller with his wife Beck, Dennis Littlewood and Karen, and Justin Thompson with Leah. So last year um, there might have been four of us on the committee, but the, our support behind the scenes was tremendous as well. So um, our sponsors, Mike Carney Toyota, uh, we can't thank them enough. Um, without their support, we we would never get this. We we would have never got this event off the ground. So. Um, the other 33 sponsors, um, I've named several of them throughout the podcast tonight, um, the barbecue community of uh, North Queensland, um, whether you be a, a Weber man or a barbecue school or a green egg, um, everyone came together for 2019. So we hope that everyone follows us for the 2020 Mike Carney Toyota virtual Townsville barbecue battle. Um, and then on to the 2021 event where you will see 32 teams on Strand Park, um, bigger bar area, live music stage, amusement rides, basically 2019, but more teams and bigger and better. So for 2020, make sure you turn on um, your notifications and uh, follow Townsville Barbecue Battle. Yep, on, on Facebook, right? On Facebook, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, look, man, thank you very much for for taking the time out to uh, to talk to me tonight. I do realise that uh, that it is a school night, and you are very busy, yeah. as you said, running your own business and and getting ready for this uh, Townsville virtual barbecue battle. So, thanks for taking the time to come talk to us on the show. I've had a great Anytime. time, and I'm sure that all the listeners and all the viewers have as well. Thank you, thank you. So there you have it, family. That was Dan Wilshevsky from the Townsville barbecue battle. I cannot overstate how much I enjoyed the 2019 event. So I'm stoked that they're doing this virtual barbecue battle in a few weeks and I'm super stoked that I can be part of it. So just to round out the interview, we met Dan and learned about his background in barbecue. We discovered how the Townsville barbecue battle started up and how they're doing the virtual barbecue battle. And we closed out the episode with a few tips and pointers about putting on a world-class event of your own. How good was that? So before you go, I just want to remind you that if you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell. And if you're on Facebook, give us a like and a share. And if you're watching on IGTV, give us a heart and a follow. And of course, if you're listening to this on a podcast app, just take a minute, give us a five-star review and a rating. And I tell you what, if you leave a five-star rating and review for the show, I'll give you a shout out in the next episode. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions.